Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is my first video of the day. It is Sunday, J July the 9th. I hope that uh, y'all are all doing well. I met some nice ladies last night, um, so we had a good time. Um, I wanted to talk about in this video something that I find to be very important, and that is trading is mostly waiting. It has been my experience that profitable trading is a lot of waiting. Okay, now Michael has 81 PD arrays. Uh, I do not, but um, a lot of the times that if you don't really know what the market is doing, so let's say that you don't have a strong grasp on what the market is doing, it's time to wait. Okay, what are some times, especially that you probably should be waiting? FOMC, um, AM session. Um, waiting for waiting for a non-farm payrolls release, waiting until after it. Um, pretty much every Sunday or Monday, you're going to end up doing a lot of waiting, waiting for the liquidity pools to build up, waiting to see where they want to re uh, they want to reopen trading for for Sunday's trading. Um, you're going to end up doing a lot of waiting if you are trading the Asian session. So if you're trading that time um, after resettlement up until about the London session, you're going to have to do a lot of waiting. Um, it Guys, trading involves a lot of patience. In fact, patience is probably the most important skill. Okay, so if you don't have any patience, and believe me, I didn't have any for a very long time until I figured out what I am, and, and guys, this comes with self-mastery. You've got to learn to sit on your hands um, and sit on your hands and wait, uh, and wait to see that you feel confident in what the market is signaling that it should be about to do. Oftentimes where you're going to get lost, I'll tell you. I will tell you where you're going to get lost. And this is where I've gotten lost before. When the market is breaking out to a new level, okay, it's not really price exploration, but it's it's seeking, uh, you know, it's seeking liquidity, for example. As you are watching the market go down, and let's say that you did not have a short on, so you were not participating, you have to wait. I mean, that's, I'm sorry, that's kind of just the bare bones news. I'm, I'm bringing it to you live, guys. You've got to wait. There's a reason why you don't really know. Ex you know that it's going after liquidity, okay? And you have a good idea that, that these are some good looking lows and there's an order block there. And as you see that the market is kind of confirming the idea as it formed a bullish breaker, low, high, lower low that pushed into liquidity, um, you would get a better idea that the market is about to come back up, right? But until that point, until you see how it wants to behave around that liquidity and, and you see some more price data, um, you really don't know, you know, because the market could have easily come down and l traded into that inefficiency, which it ended up doing uh, later on in the day, but of course it did not do it during the London session. So there is a level of accuracy that we can achieve with um, inner circle trader trading algorithmic theory and then you also need to know when to wait and when you're waiting for more information okay so there's going to be times where you are not going to have a strong grasp on, on what the market is about to or or should be about to do and oftentimes that's going to be when price is going to seek liquidity or if it's hanging in a range for a very long time, you might feel um, you might feel a little bit lost when you see that price really has traded for a very long time and not gone anywhere. Guys, that's when you should not be pushing the button. That's when you should be actively thinking to yourself, "I, you know what, I need more information. And that's perfectly fine, guys. You could wait for hours, hours and hours and hours, and just wait until you saw a pattern with which you are familiar. So for example, you wait to see that ICT uh, ICT order block pattern or ICT fair value gap or silver bullet setup, right? There's nothing wrong with waiting, guys. Um, I also wanted uh, to give you a little bit of bonus in this video other than, guys, just final word on that. Learn to wait for more information. So when should you be waiting for more information? Economic releases, okay? So CPI, FOMC, non farm payrolls. Uh, you want to wait until after those things have released, okay, usually. Well, you never want to trade right ahead of it. You might trade in the London session before it, but you actually do not want to trade right before an economic release. So that's one. Number two, guys, when should you be waiting? Sundays, Mondays, generally speaking, if it's, if it's 
that doesn't mean you're not trading Sunday and Monday, but they haven't built up the liquidity pools, right? So notice here with the S&P 500 here on Friday, it was building up liquidity pools to both sides and then it was playing the liquidity pools, right? So on Sunday and Monday, they have not really built up the liquidity pools for the week. You don't know exactly how they, where they wanna run price in terms of the weekly range. So it doesn't mean you're not taking any trades, but you expect right expectations you expect to be doing a lot of waiting on Sunday and Monday you expect uh, you expect to be doing a lot of waiting uh, during economic releases as well okay you expect number three to do a lot of waiting when price is in the in the act of going after liquidity okay you would expect to be doing a lot of waiting especially if it's going too far for your comfort so number three if price is seeking liquidity as it was here, let's say that you ended up getting out somewhere around here or even up here. My, my advice to you would be be careful re-entering short again if you feel lost. If you feel like, hey, I don't really know what Price's objective is. It's gone really far. I'm not really sure what Price's objective is. So that's number three. If You should be waiting if you really don't know, you don't know how far they want to take it. And that's okay. Number four. You should be waiting when the market has stayed in a range or a consolidation for longer than you feel comfortable with. Longer than, you know, where you can keep a consistent idea of what price should should do. Now, as you get more talent, as you get more skill, all right, as you become a master day trader, you will see that usually, um, right, so this was an ICT bearish breaker, low, high, low, sorry, high, low, high. And you can see that that was basically all time distortion. That, the market, that idea that it was going to go down, really never went away. But that's okay. If, if you're like, hey, this thing has been bouncing around too long, okay, exit, get flat. There's no problem with that. So we've talked about that. Now, as a little bonus, I want to talk about uh, the market maker sell model. And I will show you how he mentioned that it was here on the S&P 500. So market maker sell model is accumulation, reaccumulation. You then get an expansion higher. So you get accumulation, you could get reaccumulation. Expansion higher, smart money reversal, and it should come at a higher time frame level. You know, in a regular trading hours, guys, and this is ICT bearish breaker, right? High, low, higher, high, and you can see that this was pushing into that rejection block over here, which is a run on liquidity. Now notice this ICT bearish breaker. There it is, right? It's pretty much perfect. We use the low of that candle or you can use the consequent encroachment of that wick. There it is, guys, right there, okay? So you can see ICT bearish breaker. It's also regular trading hours gap. So we have accumulation, accumulation a drive into a higher time frame level. We then have so accumulation. Higher time frame level delivery smart money reversal. This is a low risk short. Okay? That's stage two. Stage three, distribution and then redistribution. Okay. Okay. Distribution and then redistribution. Now that's the kind of the schematic. And what was it targeting? What was the S&P 500 targeting? So on Friday in the grand scheme of things you can see the basic schematic and it kind of looks like Wyckoff, right? But it's not Wyckoff. Uh, but it kind of looks like it. So we have accumulation, we have reaccumulation. Price 
Then during the AM session, so notice what time of the day that is. Okay, that's New York PM open. After we deliver a high time, higher time frame level, we get a smart money reversal up here, smart money reversal. And at that point, that was a pretty low, low risk entry. All right, we had a low risk entry there. We then get distribution, we then get redistribution, and you can see what price's objective was. It was the liquidity down here, guys. This low, these relative equal lows, that was a liquidity pool down there. So this is kind of the basic schematic of the market maker sell model, um, a period of accumulation, delivery into a higher time frame level, a smart money reversal, which is a low risk short, then distribution, redistribution, and the ultimate target of price is um, is going to be sell side liquidity okay guys and it delivered that here so in this video we covered the market maker sell model an example that michael went over in his video today i'll probably just link that and then we also went over why trading is mostly waiting okay you are waiting for more information you're waiting for the liquidity pools to build up you're waiting until you feel confident that you have a strong idea what the market is about to do and so times that you are often waiting, just to recap, times that you're often waiting, number one, Sunday or Monday, why? Well, they haven't really built up the liquidity pools for the week, okay? That doesn't mean you don't trade Sunday or Monday, but it means that you need to understand they really haven't let the liquidity build up, so you don't really know exactly what the weekly profile is gonna look like in, on Sunday, right? You're just getting started. Number two, economic releases, CPI, FOMC, non-farm payrolls, we're doing a lot of waiting. Number three, if you're trading the Asian range, so after resettlement up until London, you're, you're not usually going to see that much movement. You're usually going to see consolidation, so you're probably going to end up doing a lot of waiting. Um, and then number four, if price is in the mode of seeking liquidity and it's gone further than what you thought it would, okay, at that point, you probably should just wait. Wait to see if you get some sort of a reversal PD array or continuation PD array, see if you see something. Um, and those are the times, guys. The other time that you should be waiting is if it's consolidating for longer than you are comfortable for. If you really, you feel like, hey, it's equally could go up and it equally could go down. The pools seem to be, the liquidity pools, I'm not exactly sure which one they're gonna target. Totally fine, you're waiting, guys. So you're gonna hear me, it's kind of my catchphrase. Oh, we're waiting. Wir warten, mujdom. Mujda boy, mujdom. We're waiting, that's in Russian. We're waiting. So, wir warten. German, we're waiting. Nosotros esperemos. We're waiting. Why are we waiting? We're just waiting for more information, guys, and there's nothing wrong with ever waiting for more information. So that's kind of my catchphrase. You're going to hear it a lot from me. Uh, and we also went over the market maker sell model, guys. So y'all have a good one. I'm going to be back later today with more um, recaps and analyses. Um, and that's going to be it, guys. Bye.